the previous speakers uh, from Argo Cytos as well as uh, from uh, Volvo Link and uh, even uh, the routes all made us uh, easy uh, to present ourselves. So uh, considering the time, we will be restricting ourselves uh, uh, to keep this presentation as, as short as, as possible. And over to Dr. Sarvanan. Uh, he's uh, busy and with his busy schedule, he came and is presenting here today. Sarunan, sir. And thank you, FPSI. Before I start my presentation, I would like to thank Argo Hydros and in specific Mr. Sevier uh, Uli for introducing the design of filters and different layers and the gradient please concept that is involved in filter. And we also understand that this thousand or uh, one single filter can reduce the carbon load to the extent of 100 kilograms. And as an extension, if you use the natural fibers in filtration process, I think this carbon load can be reduced further. And with this introduction, let me proceed with my presentation. Next slide. As you see, the filtration, we use plenty of um, material in the form of uh, multi-layer papers. Or the fibers are arranged in different layers with different porosity. And uh, interestingly, we use filters in face masks also today, which is more popular uh, during this pandemic period. And normally we don't use filters in the form of flat structure. We use the filters in the form of folded structure where um, the efficiency can be increased and we can arrest maximum number of impurities that are present in the filters. Next. So this is a concept that uh, Mr. Seeger was trying to explain in terms of um, uh, gradients. Because when we, say, when we say gradients, we use multiple layers with a different porosity. And when we use single layer, it uh, arrests or it stops the impurity by reducing or restricting the Brownian movement of the particles or the impurities. And when we have multiple layers, not only the dimensions, but also the tortuosity, that is the distance that the particle takes to reach the main course, will also increase and that will increase the filtration efficiency of the process. Next. So that is a way we can reduce the filth impurity levels from 16 to 30 micrometer which he was trying to explain and another interesting application where we can use the filters is soil spill cleanup especially in petroleum industries and the near petroleum exploration we often find more and more oil spills happening and this slide shows the number of occurrences that happened during the past 25 or 30 years in terms of numbers and every incident included the spill uh, with a quantum of more than 50,000 tons. So you can imagine the amount of oil we are wasting in the sea. So to clean this oil, we can definitely use natural fibers. And that is what I am trying to introduce. Next. And uh, when we say natural fiber that dispose, in addition to the cost, the disposal is so a very easy process. It can be used as a source of alternative fuel or it can be used or uh, disposed in the form of incineration. And most of the fibers are obtained or natural fibers are renewable uh, source and we don't need to depend on the uh, or oil based product or petroleum based product. And when we say natural fibers, they can definitely modify the properties. I was talking about the engineering. Definitely this engineering is possible with respect to natural fibers so that we can change the absorption or absorption level. And on completion of the task, the saturated substances can be disposed very safely. Yes. 
and another advantage in, with respect to filtration and the natural fibers is the inherent structure of the product. So when these fibers grow in a plant, they contain huge amount of cell sap. And once we cut the fibers from the plant, these cell sap evaporate and create some voids. And these voids help in arresting the impurities that are present in the air or that are present in the any liquid or fluid. And in addition to that, there are plenty of processes available for modifying the surface, uh, making them oleophilic or hydrophobic. So that depending upon the requirement, we can re-engineer the structure of the fibers, or surface of the fibers. It's very much possible. So this, you can see the same image of the natural fiber. It's a fiber taken from polymer of palm fruit. You can see the porous structure where the particles can be arrested in addition to the capillaries and in addition to the multi-layers we are going to have in the process. Also, you can see this how they are present in the longitudinal direction. So we call it as vacuoles, and these vacuoles will play a major role in arresting the movement of the particles, thereby increasing the efficiency of the filtration process. Yeah. With respect to strength, and um, again, the gentleman is talking about the reduction in the pressure or the filtration process uh, during the filtration process. These fibers. Unconventional fibers, they have very good tenacity. You can see that the tenacity under dry condition as well as the wet condition. There is not a significant reduction in the tenacity. It means yeah, even on repeated use, Mr. Viswas was talking about the drop in the filtration efficiency on repeated use. These fibers will not change the efficiency in the process. So they are suitable for dry filtration as well as uh, wet filtration. And when we look at the elongation at break, we have very good amount of elongation to the extent of 25%, which is not uh, normally observed in any synthetic fibers or man-made fibers. So depending upon the process, we can use either at the front or at the back or at the, towards the end of the filtration filter structure. Again, it's a quite interesting result. We can see the, how the fibers behave with respect to temperature. Not every process we carry out at normal temperature or room temperature. Some processes we go up to 300 degree, 400 degree or even beyond that also. Most of the unconventional natural fibers, if you see, they do not undergo any degradation till 350 degrees centigrade. Only between 100 degrees centigrade, we face some kind of evaporation of water that is present in the fiber. Otherwise, the fibers are highly stable then 350, even some fibers are stable up to 800 degrees centigrade also. So it means these fibers are suitable for as a filter at various temperature levels. That kind of engineering is very much possible by selecting appropriate fibers. Again, this is a form fiber. Next. And these are some of the fibers which give similar property levels and it can be engineered according to our needs like uh, banana fibers or fire fibers or even straw based materials and this part of country we get capo fiber which we call it as silk cotton or kenop as it said polymer of palm fibers or uh, nettle fibers or milkweed fibers and uh, interestingly we have lupa fibers which is naturally a yeah, filter product available really. and uh, with respect to keratin based we can use the greasy oven and if you look at the Coimbatore, near the Coimbatore, we have Kodekonal and uh, Salem, where we have full research center working on different application of bull fibers. Uh, definitely, that can be used for filtration also. Uh, Recycled the wool also can be used in the form of non oven. When we say non oven, the, again, the advantage is we can engineer the porosity or uh, the dimension of the opening that is available in the fabric. But Mr. Seeger was talking about the weaving and woven structure, whereas non ovens can definitely offer a better filtration efficiency compared to woven structure. Because woven, the filter, uh, the porous structure cannot be reduced beyond certain limit, whereas non oven, we can, we have plenty of opportunities or processes available for uh, different kinds of filtration. So definitely, as he said, the natural fibers offer a very good. Uh, 
opportunity for developing new designs for filters. Thank you, sir, uh, for a, a quick presentation uh, because uh, since the time is running late, you know, I will also uh, you know, run through my project, uh, my presentation on making a, a power steering to autonomous steering. So uh, ideally, we wanted to have uh, agriculture vehicles uh, to be an autonomous system because there are a few things which we have to understand because uh, the agricultural labors are almost ill treated. So people are coming out of agriculture and they start working or migrating to uh, any cities. So there is a huge shortage of uh, uh, of, uh, of labors to work and it is quite hard to work in a different soil condition. So even a tractor operator is not happy to do eight hours work, you know, because they are getting, you know, because of excessive vibration and other thing, they are, you know, running out. So, and because of that, the farmer's income is also getting reduced, and uh, the government of India has started various other schemes to double the farmer's income, under which we got this fund about uh, nine million Indian rupees uh, from Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Uh, they generously funded uh, the project to develop an multi-purpose agriculture robot as an electric system. Later, they understood that, you know, you know uh, getting as uh, the roots, uh, Mr. Ravikumar told, it is going to be very challenging to develop a fully electrical system because the cost cannot be afforded by the, the common uh, farmer. Uh, the country has got generally uh, medium and small scale people. So uh, later they changed us uh, to uh, go for retrofitting of existing system. So here what we are doing is, you know, we are using an IC engine powered uh, vehicle and then we, we are trying to retrofit with our auto steering and with the given boundary, uh, if we can define the boundary, we can go and we can develop it. So uh, the presentation is mainly on uh, the design constraint and the result and the discussion and future uh, work. This is what we wanted to uh, go ahead. So uh, the main uh, constraint uh, for uh, doing this one, you know, uh, retrofitting. Now we do not know what kind of brake, what kind of transmission system, what kind of engine system, uh, the fork and suspension, we do not know. And uh, basically these agriculture systems are supposed to work in different terrains. So the torque requirement also vary. And the agriculture vehicles will always have accessories uh, to be controlled. And in a way, if we are developing a product, it should be uh, scalable uh, to other products. Say, for example, uh, the Volvo oil has presented something like with the joystick. Now, we can also provide a, a Wi-Fi based joystick or autonomous based system where you can remotely operate uh, uh, a system. So such kind of uh, scalability is also uh, needed. And th the third thing is uh, localization and navigation. So we have to be very careful in what direction it has to move and we have to understand what is the position and what is the pose of, uh, of, of the vehicle so that we can plan the path and we can control the navigation. And again, on the onboard, we have, for, for example, agriculture, we have a lot of things, you know, one thing, what is the location information, battery information and the crop health monitoring and we have to activate other activities or accessories like pesticide spray. So this is all some of the constraints in front of us with this constraint, we have chosen uh, a, a transplanter called Kuboto, transpla uh, Kuboto Transplanter. Kuboto Transplanter, uh, we have chosen. This is mainly to a uh, paddy uh, transplanting, paddy seedling transplanting. The main objective is, you know, the rice is highly cultivated in India. So when we proposed other material, you know, they said, no, you have to go for a paddy because of uh, the large amount of cultivation is happening in India. That is one problem. The second problem is, the cultivation land for paddy is really, really challenging. You know, this is not uh, simply uh, uh, a dry soil. It is a puddled soil and uh, 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 the mud will be up to our knee level. So it is a water hungry uh, planet. So the puddling is also required and driving the vehicle is really, really, very really challenging. That is the reason almost all the systems, you know, almost all the tractor system, they use a hydrostatic transmission system or a constant power transmission system they use. And, you know, uh, our first challenge was, you know, we wanted to understand how uh, the transmission system is there with the Kubota system, you know, uh, that was the, uh, the transplanter which we have chosen and we are uh, retrofitting on it. Right, so one is hydrostatic transmission where it will boost up uh, 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 the process and maintain the constant. Uh, power. 
and the second thing is a torque generator it is also kind of a hydraulic motor and then we need to have actuating mechanism of you know transplanting mechanism that also require you no know, we have to lift it or we have to uh, change it and we have to uh, define at what interval Uh, that transplanting has to be done so all these things requires extensive use of hydraulic system so that is where we stuck initially and then we uh, started and we started working on it so this is uh, the integral power steering system of a uh, kuboto tran uh, transplanter where it uses a, a torque generator the reason for torque generator is it reduces the handle play now uh, since uh, uh, the the field the terrain is full of mud and the wheel itself having a different shape not as a conventional tires you know we cannot have conventional tire because the torque required will be very high and it has to follow and once the soil is disturbed and uh, the, the paddy may not grow so these are all some of the uh, challenges in front of us so for that they have provided torque generator and it also offer excellent stability when we drive in the straight path so the integral power system as i told it has got uh, the torque generator so it will you know convert you know the steering the small amount of steering input it generates maximum torque and it is easily able to rotate so that the driver will not uh, spend a lot of effort in you know, you know maneuvering or in steering uh, the vehicle because it is already uh, difficult for Uh, for a common person to do that is the reason they have given this one so here uh, zero torque is a, is a thing they call it as a torque motor so the hydraulic motor this hydraulic motor opens up and generates or multiplies the torque whatever uh, the steering is given so so this is a, a simple kuboto tractor which we used and of course in the subsequent section i can show you all this assembled system how it is going to be so here the major challenge is uh, the steering wheel and wheel rotation if i wanted to convert uh, from uh, uh, auto steering i mean sorry manual steering to auto steering i have to know and I, we have to understand what is uh, the wheel uh, rotation uh, correlation with the uh, steering rotation so this is what now this is about maximum of 75 degree it can turn so the angle of rotation or turning radius is about 25 cm it means that it can you know almost it can reach 0 degree turning radius so this is almost on the from the standing position it can turn unlike uh, the roots uh, roots machine where it may disturb the soil but we should not disturb the soil so it has got a turning radius of uh, 25 cm so this is what uh, the correlation for inner wheel and outer wheel so i will skip this one so with this setup you know how i am how we have done uh, the auto steering to manual steering so here uh, is uh, the retrofitting so we started using warm and warm wheel now this is one of the biggest challenge we did not know what is the uh, torque required of course the machine has already been built with some specification so we do not know what kind of a uh, field it is going to be operated because uh, uh, the machine is to be run in the in the bitumen road and the mud road and metal road as well as uh, the muddy soil so uh, the torque variation is again going to be changing so we need to have a motor and we need to have a, a good amount of torque so that the motor should not fail and the gear should not fail and the required turning is to be achieved so all these things Uh, we need to consider so and that is that was the reason we started working with various other uh, in fact we started mounting uh, the motor directly on the on the on the steering but it didn't work we failed so we came up with an alternate alternate system of warm on warm wheel and we tried with the different material most of the material was not very satisfactory in performance so we came up with the en353 material and provides maximum or higher wear resistance so that we uh, we started using uh, uh, this one so in an autonomous system we have to consider uh, uh, two part one is hardware other one is software hardware in the sense one is mechanical other one is electrical and the software means application like uh, whatever i am going to do you know if i am want to you know run in a, a straight line and want to take a, a right or take a u all these things and operating uh, the accessories like uh, 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 the transplanter all these things comes under application hmi is the instantaneous location as well as the operation content so right apart from this you know in the hardware we have a sensor electronics and the platform all these things need to be integrated and unlike uh, the conventional autonomous cars where we have all the sophistication of electronic system making 
a car into autonomous is relatively easier than making a, uh, a tractor into an autonomous system. The reason is uh, uh, the cars are very expensive so that they can provide all electronic system, whereas here we have only mechanical engagements. So making this system is going to be very difficult. This is one part. Second part for identifying the, uh, the position and for navigation and maneuvering, we need to have instantaneous data so that whenever we provide a, a geometry or whenever we provide a boundary, it has to follow a path or it has to generate its own path and it has to complete uh, that thing. So for that, we need to use a different sensors for our application. We tried various sensors like UWB. We found that UWB is uh, nothing but ultra wideband uh, sensor, uh, but it was not very effective uh, for longer communication, long range communication. So we started migrating to RTK GPS because the conventional GPS has a resolution of about a uh, few meters. Whereas uh, for autonomous cars and autonomous driving system, we need to have high precision uh, system. Therefore, the resolution should be in the order of uh, mil, uh, uh, in, in inches. So with the RTK GPS, we could able to achieve a resolution of about 2.5 centimeters. So this is to understand. And of course, uh, the manufacturing system uh, in the mechanical side, one is uh, the steering is one of the important thing. And the second thing, the linear actuation. How do I make the vehicle to move? As uh, uh, Roots uh, um, person told, now they have uh, two uh, levers. For forward, they will accelerate one thing, and for reverse, they will accelerate other pedal. No, that is very simple uh, concept. Whereas in case of the existing system, it is going to be very challenging. So how do I make reverse and forward? They have a complex lever mechanism. With same lever, they have to do. So we have made some other arrangement so that the forward reverse movement and the speed variation also can be controlled autom automatically. But again, the software, uh, which I'm, I'm skipping because uh, because of the time constraint, and we have the electronic system. See, uh, there are uh, two things which we have to understand. One is the forward movement. Other one is the steering control. Steering control is the heart of driving the vehicle because we do not have control on the hydraulic system because the hydraulic system is already given to us. Based on the hydraulic system, we have to use uh, our own system or develop our own system for the steering controller. Uh, the problem is we have tried uh, many different steering controller mechanisms as well as we tried different types of motor and we found many motors. Motors may be good, but the drivers may not match. So we have a lot of issues and with a lot of trial and error, we, we could able to uh, use uh, a different motor uh, to achieve our uh, thing, which I will be showing in a minute. This is the power distribution we have a 48 volt battery uh, to uh, control our uh, steering mechanism and a 12 volt uh, battery uh, for uh, 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 vehicle platform controller. So that is our onboard computer. So in our case, we are using uh, extensive or expensive um, Jetson board. Of course, it is uh, as a development. We are using Jetson board at the end. We wanted to have at a reduced cost so that any uh, simple farmer can afford our system uh, for retrofitting into into their existing tractors. So uh, this is our evolution of autonomous steering system. The first generation, uh, which is you know very common now, everybody is talking about BLDC motor. Uh, so we tried with BLDC motor. Uh, we failed with many BLDC motor because uh, the mismatch between the driver and the BLDC motor. So th that is one problem. The second problem is at that time now which i'm i'm going to show it in the the next slides the second part and you know, how we achieve this the stepper motor based steering is the only mechanism which provides instantaneous speed it achieves instantaneous speed with, with, within less than a, a minute that is one option and the second it also provides a sufficient torque so that the gear will not damage as well as the motor will not damage so that is that is what we tried and it is perfectly working the second generation design so in the steering control system, uh, we have a uh, master control that is NVIDIA Jetson TX2 board and we have stepper motor controller and the stepper driver. So based on that, we are getting it and the steering we have to identify, you know, as already told for one rotation, it, it rotates something around 45 degree for 1.5 rotation. It reaches uh, it reaches 75 degree. So we wanted to have instantaneous uh, feedback for that. We wanted to maintain uh, the vehicle in a straight line so that we developed our own uh, steering angle measurement uh, with a rotary encoder system. And with that, 
feedback, we could able to control the motor speed as well as the motor direction, and then we can make it uh, work in a straight line. So this is our uh, stepper motor. So uh, the maximum angle uh, from left to right, from, sorry, from zero to uh, left is 75 degree, and similarly for uh, the right is uh, 75 degree. So this is uh, this is with the, with the simple rotary encoder we made. Uh, some arrangement in the uh, steering column and and we achieve it. The all are in in house made uh, systems, and the steering response, as I told, one is we wanted to identify how much time it is going to take. The conventional hydraulic system, as you already know, it is slower in response. When someone is manually turning, it is quite okay. But if we wanted to make it um, a run or make it autonomous, then we have to be very careful. So when we tried with BLD simulator, it took nearly 20 seconds to reach uh, 75 degree in a lab mat, whereas in the soil it took nearly 20, uh, 20, 20 seconds. So it is not at all sufficient enough. By the time it reaches to that desired position, uh, the vehicle will be in a different position, right? So that is going to be very challenging for us. So we changed our uh, motor from BLDC to stepper motor and we could able to achieve uh, control of you know less than four seconds. Now we could be able to maintain in a straight line because the vehicle is going to run at maximum speed of uh, three kilometers per hour. Uh, so with that uh, response time, uh, four seconds uh, or under five seconds, we can maintain a straight line. So we don't have much problem. And the steering performance, you know, that is one thing which we wanted to maintain. You know, uh, this. If I set a 60 degree uh, as a uh, as the master control gives that, then it has to achieve 60 degrees. So with the tolerance, we initially uh, fixed our uh, uh, steering angle to plus or minus three degree, and as soon as it reaches minus three degree, it stops it. Now this is our results, and now we are working on to reduce our tolerance to one degree so that we will not have much problem of frequent fluctuation so that the motor will be moving from one side to other side to avoid that we are uh, we kept our tolerance level as three degree of course it will be reduced to one degree short and this is the power transmission mechanism uh, for a straight line drive since uh, we are going for some kind of pattern so i am uh, you know masking uh, some of the content so we have the encoder setup i know it may look uh, funny but uh, it is completely covered for the demonstration purpose. We have taken it uh, removing by all the casing and other thing. All the casings are all with IP65 standard casings so that it can we can prevent from uh, mud and other thing. Again, linear velocity control. So again, I am masking all these things uh, for uh, the patent uh, content. And other important part is, you know, as I told, we wanted to you know, spray uh, the pe pesticides or fet uh, liquid uh, fertilizers for that we have uh, three different cameras mounted on each nozzle so with our system it can instantaneously spray so each spray covers some uh, 1.5 square meter so that uh, three so it covers somewhere around uh, nine feet uh, nine, 12 feet in a length so that uh, the overlapping can be avoided so the boom spare controller. So again, I'm also uh, skipping this one. So this is what a tele operation. Uh, initially, we started with the tele operation of controlling with joystick with the remote control. So uh, before we wanted to go for a trial run. So the, uh, the the joystick with wireless joystick, it is it is perfectly working. So now we came to uh, autonomous system. For that autonomous system, we used a different operating system rather than conventional operating system. We call it as a robot operating system. This is a, a, a emerging operating system used across uh, the world, but uh, we don't find many uses. Still, it is evolving, but many of the autonomous cars uh, are using a robot operating system. That is what uh, we used our yearly adapter of the technology uh, ROS uh, into our system. So uh, this is a, a small uh, video of our uh, demonstration so that you can understand what we are.
So, but we can't hear you. There is a lot of uh, disturbance in the background. Disturbance, yes, that's what uh, I was. Uh, okay, uh, again. Yeah, now it's clear. Now it's clear. You can buy it. Okay. So, uh, with this uh, setup, we have completed a fully autonomous system. And now uh, with the sample result, which I wanted to show you, the, the top one on the left hand side is a path planned uh, is about a 10x uh, distance and uh, the, the, the bottom one is path achieved. Of course, we could not achieve 100%, but almost it uh, followed the path, whatever we, uh, we have given. Work as part of uh, this one, you know, we wanted to develop a, a full fledged uh, mechanism uh, on our own. Uh, because we don't want to rely on somebody's mechanism. So uh, that is one thing which we wanted to uh, do on it. And then uh, the seating cabin, uh, of course, now we have removed everything and we made a lot of changes in the structure. So we need to have a body styling so that we can sell the product outside. And we still is uh, pending is HMI and the front end. Uh, and uh, we have to go for uh, the field trial because of uh, the COVID. Almost one year we have lost our uh, time uh, although the project was initially uh, given for uh, two years, uh, almost one and a half years we have lost uh, because of uh, uh, the COVID. So ideally we did all the work in uh, say about uh, nine months time and we could able to do something and now the institution has been made as a COVID care center so we could not enter into the campus now and and uh, the COVID cases are uh, slightly higher side in Coimbatore, so we are restricting ourselves to getting into the campus. So possibly in another two or three months, we could be able to make it everything ready with the body styling and other things, so uh, we can go for uh, sales. That's all from my side, and thank you very much. Uh, and already we are uh, 30 minutes late, so I'm completing it. Thank you. Thank you very much.